Good afternoon, everyone. Today's topic, Bulletoric Safety for the Gynecologist. By me, Dr. Shehama, with my supervisor, Dr. Bernard. Introduction. Laparoscopic surgery has become widely accepted by surgeons as well as the patients as an effective technique to treat gynecological pathologies. However, there is an increasing number of litigations due to injuries associated with laparoscopic procedures. The reproductive and urinary tract in women are closely related anatomically and embryologically. That's why it is very important for one to know well pelvic anatomy and to have necessary knowledge on laparoscopic equipment, the basic procedures indications, complications, as well as the limitation. Please take note that in this topic, UTI will be referring to urinary tract injuries and UT will be referring to urogenic injuries. Most patients and the surgeons do prefer laparoscopic surgery compared to open surgeries due to the following benefits. Better and faster recovery times, shorter hospital stay, less post-operative pain, less volume blood loss, as well as most patients prefer it for its cosmetic. incidence and epidemiology of UTI. The overall rate ranges from 0.3 to 1 percent. Blood injuries is approximately three times more common than ureteral injuries and up to 2.4 percent of patients may require concomitant urologic interventions after hysterectomy related injuries to the urinary tract Ureteral injuries occurs in approximately 1% of all gynecological procedures. However, the rate of the ureteral injuries in laparoscopic procedures varies. Some physicians report that laparoscopic procedures have an equivalent rate of ureter ureteral stricture formation secondary to ureteral injuries, while others argue that the rate of ureteral strictures is significantly higher. Ureteric injuries can be recognized or unrecognized. Both are significantly causes of morbidity and mortality. There was a large healthcare database study which included more than 220,000 patients of whom underwent hysterectomy for benign indications that reports that the injuries to the ureters was in about 0.78%, of which 62% of these cases were unrecognized ureteric injuries. Both recognized and unrecognized ureteric injuries increases the risk of serious postoperative complications such as sepsis, nephrostomy, tube placement, urinary tract fistula. However, there was no significantly increased risk of acute renal failure or death for recognized ureteral injuries. Unrecognized injuries were associated with nearly 24th increased risk of acute renal failure and about 40% increased number of deaths. The incidence may be low due to low number of laparoscopic hysterectomies being performed worldwide. Before we go into the details of this topic, let's remind ourselves about the anatomy of the ureters. Ureters are retroperitoneal structures that runs from the renal pelvis to the bladder. They are about 25 to 30 centimeters long and composed of two segments, abdominal and the pelvic segments. 
they lie over the sore muscles, and the ureters enter the pelvis at the pelvic brim. They cross the pelvis from the lateral to medial and anterior to the bifurcation of the common arteries. At this point, the ureters runs just medial to the ovarian vessels, then descend into the pelvis within the retroperitoneal sheath, and then attached to the medial leaf of the uterine broad ligaments in the lateral pelvic sidewalls, as we can see in this picture. Lateral to the ureter is the ovarian vessels. Inferior to the internal cervical os, the ureter passes under the uterine arteries in the cardinal ligaments, as it's demonstrated by the picture on this slide, and then ureters pass close to the anterolateral phonics of the vagina and then enters the posterior aspect of the bladder. Risk factors of of ureteric injuries. They are based on two characteristics, patient's factor and the procedure factor. Patient's characteristics include all conditions that distort pelvic anatomy, conditions that obscure tissue planes and that makes visualization of the urinary tract structures difficult or more vulnerable to injuries. And these conditions include prior pelvic surgery, endometriosis, urinary tract abnormalities, history of pelvic irradiations, obesity, and others. Please note the risk of urinary tract injuries during pelvic surgeries increases with an increasing number of prior caesarean deliveries or surgeries to the pelvic organs. Procedural factors. Usually, in ureteric injuries occurs during major gynecologic surgeries that involve surgical dissection in the proximity of the ure to the ureters. And these are advanced pelvic reconstructive surgery, laparoscopic hysterectomy surgery for malignancy. There was a large database study that reports that minimally invasive hysterectomy is an independent risk factor for a ureteral injuries with an odds ratio of 4.2. Lower rates of ureteric injuries were recorded in vaginal hysterectomies and the lowest rates in endoscopic stenting and ureteric procedures than open or laparoscopic routes. However, there was an inconsistent data on how operative difficulty or operative duration, loss volume of blood, uh, volume blood loss are associated with UTI. Frequency of UTI decreases with highly experienced surgeons. Pathogenesis. Mechanism of injuries that can happen either during or after surgery, thermal damage from electro surgery or other energy sources that most frequently UTI is caused by laser or harmonic scalpel. There was a systemic review of about 90 studies that recorded that electrosurgery was the most common cause of urethral injuries with about 33% while lysis of adhesions was the most common cause of the blood injuries with about 23%. Additional potential mechanisms of intraoperative ureteral injuries include crushed with a clamp, kinked or ligated with a suture or staple, lacerated or transected during sharp or blunt dissection or while using energy source or either by devascularization or denervation. How can we prevent ureteric injuries then? 
There are three levels of prevention, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary, this includes intraoperative identification ureters, avoidance of injuries through meticulous surgical technique, and preoperative identification, as well as the evaluation of the patients for a need of placement for prophylactic ure urethral catheters. Prophylactic urethral catheters universally is not recommended. There was a randomized control trial which included about 3,200 women with no prior pelvic surgery who were undergoing major gynecologic surgeries to bilateral urethral catheters versus no stents. And it has been reported that similar incidents of urethral injuries occur in both groups. However, there was a significantly higher rate of severe ureteral injuries in the non-catheterized group. But prophylactic ureteral catheters, ureteral catheter, sorry, may be helpful for a selected number of women, and those are the women who are known with uh, or suspected with periurethral fibrosis. For example, women with severe endometriosis, large cervical fibroids, all with prior pelvic irradiation. Still, there's controversy on using prophylactic ureteral catheters. Some physicians do contradict this because they think that it does make it difficult for the surgeons to have proper visualization of the ureters because it do decreases the ureteric peristalsis and it also does take time because the urologist needs to be available at the start of the surgical case to insert the catheter. Secondary prevention. Intraoperative recognition and repair of injuries and this is important to avoid urethrovaginal or the vesicovaginal fistula. The pictures on the right side, the above pictures, is showing the solution which is used to reflect your ureters. So, and that's what appears in a green color. It makes it better for the surgeons to visualize the ureters. However, we don't use this in TBH. And just inferior to it, the picture demonstrates the free contrast in the pelvis due to incomplete ureteric injuries. In TBH, we normally do routine cystoscopy immediately post-operative to exclude any ureteric or any blood injuries. Tertiary prevention. Post-operative diagnosis and the treatment of urinary tract injuries and please do call for help urologists or the highly experienced gynecologists if you can't fix it yourself. Preoperative evaluation, informed consent, proper counseling for, of the patients is very important and the proper documentation in the medical records and the consent form. Medical history needs to be uh, known. For example, prior pelvic surgery, radiation, infection, known or suspected endometriosis, congenital anomalies of the urinary tract. This may be difficult to predict, most likely in family history of congenital anomalies only we can suspect of it and other images such as MRI needs to confirm this or the CT urography. Operative setup patients needs to be positioned in a dosal lithotomy rather than supine position as this provides better access for evaluation of the urinary tract 
with cystoscopy or other methods that require access to the urethra. Surgical technique. Please know your anatomy. Identify and isolate the structures of the lower urinary tract before operating on other pelvic structures. Always be aware of anatomic variation and the pelvic pathology. Please note that most common mechanism of ureteric injuries is an incidental ligation or transection while operating on the other structures. That's why it is very important to identify the ureters at each step of the procedures. The highest risk of denervation or devascularization is during uterolysis. That's important to avoid removing all tissue around the ureters as this may cause or result in ischemic necrosis. During oophorectomy or hysterectomy, mostly ureteric injuries occur during ligation of the ovarian vessels, ligation of the uterine vessels, or during closure of the angles of the vagina cuff. The most common site of urethral injuries is the distal ureter at the level of the uterine arteries. How to ligate ovarian vessels safely without causing any injuries to the ureters. Must always open the retroperitoneum to visualize the ureters directly. Visualize the ureters through the peritoneum or either by palpating the ureters. Expected thermal spread from device range from 2 to 22 millimeters with an average of about six millimeters. However, this is another topic on its own to be discussed in the next presentations. Visualization of the peristalsis confirms that the ureters has been identified. One can also palpate the ureters. However, it can be misleading at times because there are many structures that can have the similar consistency as the ureter. The ureter has a rubber bed-like consistency and it should snap when pulled away gently and the ureter does not pulsate when palpated. Ligation of the uterine arteries. Try only to include the vessels. Try to mobilize the bladder from the anterior phonix and displace it inferiorly. Shift the ureters inferior to the uterine arteries. The ureters pass below the uterine vessels, as you can see on the picture on the right side. And once the vessels are ligated, the ureters will pass just inferior to the lateral to the spindle. Very important to please stay medial to the uterine arteries. I mean, sorry, stay medial to the uterine pedicle. Cuff closure. The ureters enter the bladder posteriorly along its interface with the anterior vaginal wall. Be careful to avoid both ureters and the bladder. As the bladder is dissected off the surface of the vagina or the cervix and displaced inferiorly, the ureters will then descend to the bladder and level safely below the superior aspect of the calf. The conclusion, laparoscopic surgeries is highly preferred by many gynecologists globally nowadays. Most patients prefer laparoscopic surgeries rather than open surgeries for cosmetic reasons. But there is a higher incidence of litigation in laparoscopic procedures. Most ureteric injuries are unrecognized. 
and the unrecognized surgeries associated with higher morbidity and mortality than recognized ureteric injuries. Very important in prevention of ureteric injuries. Know your anatomy, have a better knowledge on the pelvic anatomy, better knowledge and skills and experience on laparoscopic procedures. My references, thank you for taking your time for listening. Have a great weekend.